Today I'm going to show you how to use the new date picker in iOS 14 in Swift UI. Okay, to start off, I just have a brand new Xcode project. I just created, didn't do anything. You can see we still have the default hello world. Well, that's the first thing we're going to get rid of. And then we're going to start typing date picker. And you can see the initializers that we'll get here. There's a bunch of them. Don't be confused. Uh, it all consists of like four components, right? The title, the selection, uh, a potential date range, and then what components you want to show. So I want to make sure I have all four of those. You can see these are usually a combination of those four things. So I'm going to go down here uh, to make sure I get uh, date range and display components. You can see I have all four of them here. So we'll go to that one. And you can also like adjust these initializers on the fly, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Okay, so first we have the title key, which is just the string, which is what it's gonna say. Uh, for example, just do birth date. You'll see that pop up here in a second. Now selection, this is the value we wanna hold, right? So if we're picking our birth date, we wanna save that value, like whatever date I chose, somewhere in a variable. You can see it takes a binding to a date. So up here in our content view, we'll create a uh, at state private var called birth date. And we're going to set that equal to just uh, initialize a date, which is now or today's date. That's just what it's initialized with. Uh, you'll see as we select our date, that value that we select will get stored in this state variable called birth date. So to connect the date picker we're creating with this variable here, we have to put a binding to it, which is dollar sign and then birth date, the name of what we did. Okay, so now we just connected our date picker with our variable. Now we want a date range. Right, this you don't necessarily have to have this parameter if you didn't want to specify any dates. Maybe uh, on something like a birth date, right? You don't want any dates into the future, right? Because like you you can't not be born yet, right? So you can do something like dot dot dot, and then up to right now. Now, if you were working on an app that maybe you had to be 21 to use or 18 to use, you can do some date math, date calculations to find out, you know, 18 years ago from today, and you can make that your date range. Um, we won't dive into date ranges because that's like a whole separate video doing date math and date ranges, but I wanted to show you that and I'll give you another example in a little bit. Now displayed components, again, another thing that's kind of optional. If I hit dot here, you can see we have date, an hour and minute. We'll start with date, but I'll show you the other options. You know, let's just get this first one up and then we'll start tweaking it. So I'll try again on my preview. And there you go, we have our date picker here. You see birth date, that's our title. And then our compact version here, January 20th, 2021. That's today's date. Uh, that's because we created date you know, from the date now, when I click that, you see, well, let me actually run the preview, hit this play button, right? So now when I'm running my app, I click that, you see I get the new iOS 14 graphical date picker. And you'll notice because I set the date range of only in the past, that's what that dot, dot, dot to today's date means. I can't pick a date in the future, right? You see, they're all grayed out. I can only go back into the past, which makes sense for a birth date. Um, now, if I did want to do only dates in the future, I just switch this around, right? I do from today's date, and then the dot, dot, dot afterwards. So now you'll see when I click my date, I can only pick dates in the future. I can't pick dates in the past. So again, you can restrict this date range however you want using all kinds of date math. That's for another time, but those are just two basic examples of how you do that. Okay, now let's go to date components, right? We, do, we just used dot date. Well, that is for something like a birth date. You can do the hour and minute, and that will give you, as you can see, something like a time, like if you were setting an alarm, or maybe you wanted to have the user set a specific time to get an alert, uh, right, or a notification or whatever, um, right? So you pick that, and I think that's not gonna work because I have to be in the future. So I have to be later than 1.45 p.m. That's because of our date range. You probably wouldn't do the date range stuff uh, if you were just picking a time, but let's pick a time into the future. Let's go to 3.40, 6.45 p.m. Okay, that will work. So. You might be wondering, well, how do I set like date and time, right? Because you just showed me either or. Well, that's the default, actually. Remember, like I said, not all of these parameters were required. So if I just outright delete displayed components where I'm specifying date or time, and we'll just leave it there. Now you see the default had already changed. I get the date and time. So when I click on one of these, you see I get a different calendar with the time at the bottom. If you remember that time at the bottom wasn't there before. So now I can select a date and time at the same time. Like I said, that is the default behavior. Um, that's what you'll get if you don't specify displayed components like we had before. And on that note, the same thing goes for this date range, right? Let's get rid of this date range parameter here. Um, and we just say, give us any date you could possibly want, right? So now when I click on date, now I can go like forever into the past and forever into the future, right? We're not, we're not restricting this at all like we were before. So that's what I meant by, you know, these parameters are, are a bit optional. However, you're pretty much always gonna need a selection because you have to store whatever uh, the data is. So what you're looking at right here is like the simplest form of a date picker. 
adding the date range is, you know, just giving you more customization on some limitations and then adding the display components, again, just more customization for you. Now, as a little side note back to here, like, you know, a, a very common way you're gonna use dates is within a form, like looking at a screen like this, like an account screen, right? First name, last name, date of birth, like that's pretty common. So to put this in a form, you don't really have to change the date picker at all. You just put the form and add the little closing brace at the bottom there. And then we'll do a quick little uh, control I to line up our brackets there. And then now you can see it is in that, that form kind of look here. Um, so I did just wanna show you how to put it in a form as well. It's really no different. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is the different styles you can do. So with a modifier of dot date picker style, and then you pass in a date picker style, you may be wondering, well, how do I know what the date picker styles are? Well, I have the documentation here, which I'll link in the description here. It's on date picker. Uh, if you scroll through one, this will show you how to set up some of those date ranges. It'll give you an example of that. So if you are interested in that, check out uh, the link there, but you can see the different styles. If you scroll down here in the documentation, right? We have default picker style, which is what we've been using. Wheel picker style field date. Now, some of these like stepper date picker style, if you click on it, you'll see it is only available in Mac OS. Some of these styles are not universal. Some are iOS only, some are Mac OS only. So take a look at that when you're trying to change the style. Uh, just as an example, let's switch to wheel date picker style. So let's go back to Xcode and then we'll do that wheel date picker style. There you go. And you'll see here, we get the old faithful wheel, right? Many of us are probably uh, familiar with this. And then let's say we didn't want that compact style. If I comment this out, you'll see what I'm talking about. This, maybe we didn't want this, maybe we actually wanted to show the calendar in our UI like all the time. So we can do that too. Uh, that is the graphical date picker style. There you go, our calendar is there. They don't have to like click to expand it. The calendar is just always there. And again, the default date picker style, which you don't have to actually type that in, that's what you get by, by default, <laughs> by definition, is just this compact one that if you tap on it, you get the default date picker. In iOS 14, you're gonna get this, Previous to iOS 14, you're going to get the uh, the wheel scroll. So that's the basics of date picker and SwiftUI and iOS 14. If you like my presentation style, you like my teaching style, I started creating my own courses. You can check them out at the website here, and we'll see you in the next video.